it's the same for all of us. I'm just telling you, it is. This, tonight I would like to, to talk to you a little bit about the Holy Spirit. Uh, when we were interviewing for candidates for, for uh, and this is no reflection to the candidates, it just, it's just a spot that, we, that I noted, uh, there was a question that we asked about the workings of the Holy What does the Holy Spirit do? And, and tonight, just like you listen to all these old hymns and everything, we sing a lot about God. We sing a lot about Jesus. We talk a lot about Jesus. But oftentimes, I think we miss the, the fact of there's a Holy Spirit mixed in all this, right? Mm -hmm. And I started to say, during our interviews, I noticed there was a spot there that it, it seems like we're not sure what to do with him. Now, tonight, in 20 minutes, 30 minutes, uh, we won't fit everything together of the Holy Spirit. So this is a, a, a working man's presentation of, of maybe getting your feet wet. I mean, my, many of you may be very comfortable may have biblical knowledge and, and, and understand totally everything about the workings of the Holy Spirit. But, you know, first of all, he is the third part of the Trinity of, of the Holy God. Amen? Amen. And sometimes we refer to it as an it or a, a that or a something. It, it's not. He is a he. Amen? Amen. He is a he. Uh, so uh, in this morning's presentation, I made the comment that salvation and repentance is a positive redirect in, com in, in coming back to who we were designed to be. And that's really what I feel. That's honestly how I feel. It's God pulling us back into what we were supposed to be as a child of God, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, and I didn't say, if you missed it there, it's, uh, tonight's text is in Acts 1 and Acts 2. Acts 1 and 2. Sounds like a drama play, doesn't it? We'll be in Acts 1 and Acts 2. And as we discussed, in the analogy of the ship captain throwing a life preserver to one of us uh, as to rescue us from certain drowning, so our Father God offers us a rescue from certain death. Amen. I mean, that is the, I was thinking about that, 63.8 uh, uh, million square miles of ocean, and if you were bobbing in the middle of it, would you accept the rescue? Absolutely. You would. Yeah. You would think so. But how many people, like I said this morning, how many people are in that same situation right now and think they're just going to swim it out, right? I'll, I think I'll they just... don't need the rescue. It's kind of like that joke that guy told about the, the guy that was trapped on top of the house, and they sent a boat, and they sent a helicopter, and, and he said, well, God, I prayed, and you said you were going to come save me, and God was like, I sent, you know, three different people, and you wouldn't pay attention, right? Anyway, um, but in that, uh, I, I want us to think about tonight the Holy Spirit and, and, and what, at least in an intro type level, uh, where, what, what is the Holy Spirit? No, I shouldn't say what is, who is the Holy Spirit, right? Is that better? Is that better? Mm -hmm. See, God, he, he loves us without asking, just like this morning. I did love that part of the analogy. When you're bobbing in the middle of the ocean, right, he doesn't say, how'd you get there? Well, how'd you fall off the boat? How'd you get into that? He just says, here, 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 here is rescue, right? That's the beautiful part of how he loves us. And because and, 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 God's concern with Christians is who we were designed to be. Huh? He already knows what happened to us. What he's concerned about is who we were designed to be. Thus, the reason that he offers the redemption, the regeneration, right? And as Christians, the follower of Christ is someone who witnesses Christ to others. That's just the basic definition of who a Christian is, right? Someone that can witness. So, as we know, we have salvation given to us as well as this written scripture. And, and, this, and this is an ordained part of God's will right here, the church. Amen. Amen. Uh, so he gives us the, the salvation, the written scripture, and the church. And to the point I want to speak to tonight... We are also given the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. The Holy Spirit, which is, is I think, and again, if, 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 I, if, I, uh, if I misoverstate my to the place here, I apologize, but I, I do think many times the Holy Spirit is often confused, left out, or just flat misapplied in our lives, in, in, his, in his workings. Many of even believe that the Holy Spirit is something they can conjure up. I've talked to people. It's like the great spirit. You know, I, and I don't mean to be disrespectful, but it's like, it, well, that's the only way I can say it. It's, it's like a great spirit in their life, right? Uh, meaning as, as with some ceremonious actions, they can call him up from, from wherever they think he resides, the bottle or, you know, it, it's, it, it, it can be a little concerning sometimes. Uh, while others believe that the only way, the only time he shows up is to totally overwhelm them, right? It's kind of like Acts, we're going to talk about that tonight, when it said he came as a mighty rushing rim. A lot of people stopped right there and just said, that's how the Holy Spirit is. He just, <laughs> right? It's all or nothing. When in reality, the Holy Spirit is ever present. He has been present. He always will be present. And he is, again, the third person within the Holy Trinity of God. Now, we've studied that way back when I first came here. But if you're not familiar with the Trinity of God, that'll give you something else to do this week is go study the Trinity of God. And then you can still scratch your head and say, I get it. 
There's many analogies, the egg, the shell, the yolk, the white, right? Steam, water, ice. There's many analogies of how we've tried to put our minds around, but here's one of those things. You may not totally be able to figure out God. <laughs> Some, I, mean, I, I mean, really, just, you know, it's, but it's an acceptance of, right? It's acceptance of the situation. Uh, and for record, our first acknowledgement of the Holy Spirit's presence is actually noted in where we were this morning, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. And if you want to turn there tonight, we'll do a little Bible drill here for fun. Go over to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Just, just to exercise you. Some of you just sitting back there relaxing, thinking about when will he be quiet? Will he be saved? Will we go home now? <laughs> Genesis 1, chapter 1, verse 1. He said, yeah. everybody there? Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. If you haven't got it, say, oh me. Okay, so you got it. Oh, I, in the beginning, God created. I just love to read that part because that satisfies anybody that gets confused to how we got here. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form, and the void, and void, and the darkness was on the face of the deep, and the what? Spirit, Spirit, Spirit of God. God was hovering over the face of the waters. Huh? Yes. So we see our first. Uh, announcement or, or first uh, relevance of the Spirit of God. Therefore, He's ever present, has been present, and always will be present, right? Mm -hmm. If you also consider, and you don't have to turn there if you want to, but in, in Genesis 41 38 is the story of Joseph's rise to power under Pharaoh. Remember that one? Brothers traded him off. He came out of, you know, they became powerful in the government, got put in prison. What a, what a life, right? Mm -hmm. But in 4138, Pharaoh said, Then Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom is the Spirit of God? That was in Genesis 4138. Pharaoh said And then Pharaoh recognized that, right? <laughs> to now, that, and then, you know, Bernie, hang on to that because that's really a great concept because, and I'm going to jump ahead a little bit here, but as you know, I hope you know, and maybe you don't, this is what we're talking tonight. When you have salvation, you are given what? But what is that? You're given as well, in addition to life. I'm going to put that way, because salvation is life. In addition to that, what are you given? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Right. Holy Spirit. Sorry, Joe, I kind of tricked you up there a little bit. But yeah, you're given life, and in life you're given Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about that uh, scripturally in just a moment. Is so, it automatic? Huh? I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm no, you're okay. No, no, no. no, it is automatic. It's is a two-part. It actually, my words are it's a two-part epoxy, but you're pushing me further into my notes before I want to get there. So... <laughs> Down over yeah, here. calm down. No, he's <laughs> overachieving, isn't he? Yeah, he's heckling. <laughs> but no, the point to you, what you said, Bernie, is very well because, see, when we realize where that instruction, that encouragement, and that power comes from, it comes from the Holy Spirit who is given to us. Mm -hmm. Right? Because what I wanted to say, Bernie, is you can't, if you see someone, and it's actually in my notes, if you see someone growing in Christ, guess what you also know? That the Holy Spirit is within them. Right? And I'll give you scripture to that fact. That the Holy Spirit is within them. So let me go back to where we were in Genesis 41, 38. Uh, the Old Testament, there are many, there are other evidences of the influence of the Holy Spirit uh, within the story of Moses building the tabernacle in Exodus 31. Uh, let's, let's, let's just take some time and turn over to Exodus 31. Let me see if I can actually find Exodus. It's next in line. <laughs> it is. Exodus 31. Exodus is Exodus. Exodus is exiting. 31, and I'm looking at passage of uh, scriptures. I found 30, 31. I don't have a 31. There, I have a 31. 31, verse 1 through 3. This is God speaking to Mophis, Mophis, <laughs> Moses. <laughs> wow. And Moses, in reference to uh, the son of Uri, and, and God said, it says here, it says, I have filled him with the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. In wisdom and understanding, in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship. And I, I really, I mean, I know this is in context of him building uh, the tabernacle, but think about it. this. This is actually a great description of what the Holy Spirit does for us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. He fills us with the Spirit of God in the wisdom and the understanding because he is an encourager for us to do what? Grow. In Christ. To yeah. become sanctified. How do you become sanctified? You got to grow. And how do you grow? Knowledge of the Lord. So you learn. Read your you Bible. Apply yes. <laughs> what's available to us for material, right? Right. We gotta apply it. So see here again in Exodus thirty-one three, we see uh, the, the, the I have filled I have filled him with the Spirit of God. This is a very powerful example of, of what the Holy Spirit, like as I just said, does for us. As as uh, as we know, as he was given to us in Acts one eight, and that's where I'm at tonight in our text. Acts chapter one and verse eight. If you still have that, we can turn over there. Acts one and verse eight. When Jesus advises his disciples, 
He said, but you shall receive the power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in all of Judea and Samaria and to ends of the earth. I'll read that for you one more time. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You shall be witnesses to me in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Mm -hmm. You know what he just did right there? Anybody. It's an open forum. Anybody. He just commissioned the mission of us. Honestly. This is where God ordains the current church, the modern day church, which is us. So that's our marching order. Well, that also ties back to Matthew 28, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ye therefore. We, we most often go back to that reference, though, right? Go ye therefore, saving, baptizing, right? Mm -hmm. But here's another place right here. This is where God ordains. He is right here. I want you to be a witness to me in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of all. This is where he commissioned the, the, the church, if you will. The mission of the modern day church. Because as speaking to the will of God, this is when God gives the Holy Spirit to the church collectively. He gives it to everyone in the community, to every one of you who have accepted Christ. Mm -hmm. Given the church the formal, if you will, this was the formal acknowledgement, the formal recognition that they were the entity chosen. Mm, this is the beautiful part. Us. Look around the room. Go ahead, take a minute. Just look around. Well, what, what are the cool facets of that? Not yet, Bernie. We're still looking. I didn't say talk. Look around the room. Christ. And that's and why we have Bernie. <laughs> Do I? It was the risen Christ that said this to them. Yes. And that, that's after the resurrection. That's a pretty powerful thing that you know, I wish I was there. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, if Jesus spoke to me at any given time, <laughs> it, would been, it would have been a spiritual thing. But yes, this is, a, this is Jesus talking to them after the resigna, re, 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 resignation. After his resignation. He resigned and said, I'm, no, after the, the resurrection. See, this is where he gave the entity chosen to the spread. The, and why I said, look around the room tonight, including Bernie and all of us. Look who he chose. <laughs> no wonder he resigned. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> this is the beauty of it, right? Yeah. yeah. This is the, the, the this is how much that he believes in who you are. As a, this is see, this is the value that I keep referring to. He left us with his mission to spread the good news of who he was. That's the beautiful part. He takes the broken, the crippled, the lame, all of our little, it's like that old Santa Claus movie, remember the old, old original one that they had the misfit toy island? Anybody else remember that? Yeah. Huh? I just love it, love, love that little cartoon when I was a kid because they were about, he had all the broken, anyway, going down the wrong road. And you get the idea, he had all the misfits, right? Yeah. And that's how he sees all of us, not as misfits, but as witnesses to him, see? And in the end, he chose to spread the good news of the world. This is where he signs it off. Simplified, therefore, he assigns the churches, and here's that really part we don't like, that R word, responsibility. Mm -hmm. See, we weren't just to be saved so that we could sit. We were saved because we have a responsibility to share what he's given us to other people. Amen? Amen. The church is being you and me. The responsibility we have to him, and at the same time, he has also given the formal announcement that the Holy Spirit was to be the guide and teacher to help us to achieve our task. Anybody have a, anybody, I don't want to say anybody have a different opinion. Everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. This is what he, he said this morning, which is, is to get up, as he told him Jonah, right? Jonah, mm -hmm. get up, go, and witness. Mm -hmm. And that's right here. Mm -hmm. Right here. That's right here. And, and for fact, the gift of the Holy Spirit is made available to each and every person within the body of Christ, within the saved church. Y'all hear that? The fact, the gift of the Holy Spirit is made available to each and every person within the body of the a body of Christ, mm -hmm. right? What does that mean? Saved body of believers, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's not somehow given more to one than the other, but given equally to all. You ever thought about that? Mm -hmm. See, I, I think sometimes it's not that we don't have the Holy Spirit, it's that it's how we apply the Holy Spirit, Right? Which is true in our salvation period, isn't it? See, it's always, it's always, this is always a good time to say that generally speaking, it's not what he gives us to work with that's always the issue. It is how we work with what he gives us. Huh? Because many people struggle with the fact that they say, well, I, I don't feel, right? I don't feel the Holy Spirit. I don't feel. I'm going to tell you, folks, if you want to roll up your sleeves, Christianity is not about an emotional movement. Amen. It's about hard work. 
And, and, and unfortunately, in a world today, and especially with a lot of big preachers much bigger than me, and for years have been in front of me, and not that I'm the only one that's ever preached it, but there's a lot of folks that preach this message of just feel good Jesus, right? Name it and claim it. Mm -hmm. huh? Don't have to get into it, right? Make me feel good about who I am. And we made it an, an emotional situation that we're waiting for the Holy Spirit to come into us and shock us when the Holy Spirit was given to you when you were saved. Mm -hmm. It's a working man's Christianity. It's a roll up your sleeves and go to work kind of God. Amen? Amen. See, that's the situation. It's, it's not often how we, what he gives us, but it's how. We, so I say that only because you say, well, that, that person seems to be, that's kind of where you were a while ago, Bernie, with that. That person seems to be more inspired by God. Well, guess what? They can be. Why? Because they're allowing God to work in their lives. Huh? See, they're allowed, they put, that's that question this morning, what will I do for God or what will I do for myself today? You say, well, that, that person just seems to be on a closer walk with God. Maybe it's because that person has allowed the Holy Spirit and Jesus to work within them. Amen? Mm -hmm. Maybe they've applied it just a little bit harder. See, one might argue about their share of the power of God that's given to them. Uh, you know, having more or less. I, I, I don't, I'm just saying. When in reality, it's not the portion of the gift that is a, of the issue, but the application of the gift that's often lacking, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, what is that old saying? It's not how big the... Big in the fight. fight. It's not how big, big the fight... fight the, 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 the dog... It's not fight, oh. fight in the dog. There you go. You don't get that one? Always mess it up. It's not how big <laughs> the dog is in the fight. It's how big is the fight in the dog, right? See, salvation is given to all in the same dose, and the Holy Spirit is given to all in the same dose. By Brother Tim, no, scripturally speaking. You can, can, yet, can, any, can any certain person seem to have a strong relationship? Like I was talking, can it be seen more bolder? Yes, it can. Why? Because they're allowing, they're working, they're reading, they're praying, they're closer. We come in the presence of God. Sometimes we stay in the presence of God, and then sometimes what happens? We wander off, right? We forget to read our Bible. We forget to pray. We get busy. You know, it's not enough so we get up every morning and go, God, I just don't want to talk to you, babe. Has there been moments for that in your life? Yes. Yeah. But a lot of times we drift out of the presence of God because we just forget what? We forget to keep him in the relationship with us, right? We go to battle without him, right? We, we start wanting to write. So we have to go back and ask, that person seems so much bolder. They seem so much more alive. Well, it could be that they're just applying him, right? The application. But see, this is based on how we apply him in our salvation and how we depend upon the power of the Holy Spirit to grow us. The gift are the same to all. Therefore, it comes down to how we choose, and here's those words again, how we choose to live our lives, right? I want a closer walk with, God. what is that song? Clo just walk a closer with walk with thee, right? Now, we often sing that about who are we thinking about when we're singing it? Jesus. Jesus. How do we get there? Allow the Holy Spirit. Huh? Allow the Holy Spirit to guide you there. To guide you there. See, the gifts are all the same. Therefore, it comes down to how we choose to live our lives. That's the question I'm always asking. What do you do with the gifts that are given to us? We say, well, we're given the gift of life, right? We're given the gift of what else through the Holy Spirit? Anybody? Knowledge. I was going to say interpretation, but interpretation is knowledge. right. It's kind of like it said in that, in, 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 that, in that passage in 4138. Excuse me, in Exodus 3. I have filled them with the Spirit of God in wisdom and understanding and knowledge and all manner of workmanship. It always goes back to that passage. People say, I can't understand the, uh, the Bible. Think about it. Why would God save you and give you an instruction manual that you could not read? Mm -hmm. And we don't pick it up and read it. And we don't ask for what? Guidance. Guidance. From the Holy Spirit. Help. Mm -hmm. Father God, I don't get this. I pro and I've told people this time and time again. If you will read something, put it down, come back and read it. Put it down, come back and read it. Pray about it. I promise you, God will open that envelope for you. How do I know that? Yeah, yeah. I'm a C grade student. Right? I'm right there with you, brother. Huh? Now, you, and, anyway, I started saying, and you'll learn it different, and you'll see it there, and it'll be applied different in your life as you go, but he'll start playing a layer of instruction, of a base for you so that you can understand. Here's the deal what he needs you to understand at that moment in your life. Because you know what? There's still places in this Bible. I don't know about you, Brother Clevenger, or you, Brother Butch, but there's places in this Bible that I went into study and went, no, not today. You know why? I don't have time because I can see where it's going. And it's way over, it's like the Pacific Ocean. It's way over my head. 
I still got lots to read. I, I didn't get stuck on one word and write 14 sermons on one passage. I don't know how I'm going to get through the whole Bible. It's just not going to happen. I'm serious. I write pages, and I think, oh, they're not ready for that. So anyway, that was, a, that was a rabbit trail. But back to the point. Sorry about that, rabbit trail. What are you going to do with the gift that he's given you? The gift of salvation, and here's the deal, and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Because they come together. See, we talked about this morning in Deuteronomy 31 8. It said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Think about that. Now, we're thinking about, at that point, we're thinking about who. And I actually said that this morning. God will never leave you nor forsake you. How do we know that to be true? But how do we know that to be true? The Holy Spirit. Thank you. And who is the Holy Spirit? He is of God. Thank you. See how much. How that kind of comes together and seems it. See, you mean God's walking around with you? No, but I have the, ins the Holy Spirit indwelling in me. Ooh. Well, that's that. See, that's how we can know. How can God? Uh, how can God forsake you when He has given you the Holy Spirit, which is His Spirit? Now, here, see the witness in Acts one five, in which Jesus said, "You have heard of me." I'm sorry, Acts one five. You have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Not many days from now. Huh? Which is the very confirmation that the Holy Spirit comes upon every believer at the time of, con of conversion. I started saying of conversation. Conversation or conversion, either one. Meaning that if you have a conversation and accepting, then you have a conversion, a regeneration, a renewal into an heir of God, into Christ, right? He is part of our salvation. It is a package as you do not get one without the other. It, it doesn't work. 1 Corinthians 12, 13 said, For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Mm -hmm. Huh? And if we also read the, of this relationship, and we also read of this relationship in Romans 8, 9. Turn over to Romans 8, uh, chapter 8 right quick, would you? I don't work out very hard sometimes. Romans chapter 8. And this verse is... Uh, Verse 9. 8 9. I mean, you can read the whole thing, but I'm just going to point out to verse 9. Let me back up to 8. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are in, not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit does what? <laughs> now, now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ. He is not his. And if if Christ is, is in you, then the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit of life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give you life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. That's a whole lot of indwelling right there. Isn't it? Yes. But isn't that a wonderful promise? Yes. See, how could God forsake you that if you've accepted him and that if you realize that the Holy Spirit was given to you at that time, then in one, you can never be forsaken. Mm -hmm. Right? You ever had that feeling like I just God's not listening? Well, guess what? He, is. he can, knows what you're thinking because he's indwelling in you. Amen? Mm -hmm. See, we can't, we can't be alone. Now, there's that word in there. Uh, back in verse 9, it says, but if the Spirit, it says, but in the Spirit, if... You see that one? You might circle that if. Indeed, the Spirit of God dwells within you. And there's within the promise sometimes, right? Are you truly saved? Right? That's a big if right there. Because a lot of people claim salvation, but then what do we know from that? There are no fruits of the witness, right? A lot of, a lot of people uh, quench the Spirit. It's there, but we quench it because we know that we need to do this or that, but we choose. So we quench the spirit of God. It's just like sitting in a church like we are now. If God touches your heart to do something or say something, and you quench it, well, you're you're holding back the spirit of God. Is trying to work in you, and, and a lot of times the spirit works in you. It will work in the people that's around you. But if you quench it, then God can't use you. So a great example of that is if you're in a conversation. Or in, say in a Sunday school class, say you're in an open forum, and you feel the need to say something, and then you think, you know, I, I don't really know the verse to that, or I, I'm not, I don't, you know, guess what? It's puzzle pieces for God, right? 
That's what he's saying. He plugs that in, right? Because you don't know who's listening that needs to hear it from you. Mm -hmm. See, that's the part we can't understand, right? Mm -hmm. We can't understand how God takes us, takes some little part of our lives, and by one kind gesture, one word, it, it could be at a family gathering, it could be in the middle of a store. We don't know how God is going to use that. But like he said, if we hold it back, then we know one thing. He's not going to use it because we were not obedient, right? You see, that's why salvation and, uh, and, and having the Holy Spirit, as I said earlier, the, the thought I had was it's a two-part epoxy. And that was for the mechanical guys in here, but if you buy epoxy, you, you get a hardener and a glue, and you mix them together, and you get something that's firm, right? It holds together. You can't be saved without the Holy Spirit, and you can't have the Holy Spirit in dealing with it unless you are saved. Now, that's critical because there are a lot of people who believe, I'm just full of the Holy Spirit, but they don't really know God. Right? And that's very, that's concerning. It's dangerous. Uh, and this from the Nelson Commentary, uh, and, I, and uh, I thought it was good. The presence or the absence of salvation for a person is determined by the presence or the absence of the Holy Spirit in their lives. Huh? Mm -hmm. The presence or the absence of salvation for a person is determined by the presence or the absence of the Holy Spirit in their life. How do I witness my God? Amen. Therefore, if, if a person is truly a Christian, when they win through repentance, the Holy Spirit of God takes up residence in their hearts. The Holy Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, and this is connection. This connect, excuse me, and this connection action occurred on the day of Pentecost for us at the present day, which is which is the church. This is how this was formed. Now look again at Acts one five, and again I'll share with you. Uh, you have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Now, not many days from now was referring to what? Pentecost. 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 Well, so if you flip over now to chapter 2 and verse 2, chapter 2, verse 2 in Acts. Have you ever looked up a laminate? No, but it's the same it's process, a, right? It's a microorganism that holds our whole body together. Oh, really? A laminate. And it's in the shape of a cross. Really? <laughs> Under a microscope. Awesome. I did not know that. I thought you were talking about laminated countertops. No, no, no. no. <laughs> oh, I went down that road, so I was still in construction. <laughs> But it would be a good comparison. But it's the glue that it's holds a glue. our whole body together. It's a glue that holds it. That's an awesome deal. You should teach them that. Yeah, you got a lesson for this month's deal. I've been working on that one. There you go. Chris, I knew you had it in you. There you go. Dave's supporting you the whole time. He's right behind you. Way over there. Get it. No. So here in, in chapter 2, verse 2, it says, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting, then they, and then there appeared to them divided tongues, a house of fire, and the one set upon each of them, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, it's concerning that many people stop. This is where they stop with the whole story of the Holy Spirit. Boom. This is it. They built their whole relationship with the Holy Spirit right here on that verse. And you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Now, it's concerning me that they stop here and believe, and believe that the Holy Spirit, as I mentioned earlier, is, the only, is only available to us in overwhelming moments. That somehow the only time his presence is present is in a high octane, emotionally overwhelming, spiritually moment that it just, poof, it overpowers us, right? When the fact is we already know that his presence, he is here, was here. He's indwelling in us to encourage us and to grow us and to strengthen us. Now, do I believe that the Holy Spirit can make you talk funny? I believe the Holy Spirit can do anything he wants to. <laughs> and I have shared moments, I, I know at least at one time in this church when we, when there was a couple of years ago that I remember standing here speechless at the front because I could see the power of the Holy Spirit and I had nothing to say. It was an awesome morning in this church and I've seen it a few other times in my life that I've really seen the openness of the Holy Spirit loose, if I could say that. Mm -hmm. So just like I did a little chill right there, just kind of mentioned that. I'm just saying it is a real deal. But what's concerning is when we base everything we got on some emotional movement of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, you're constantly waiting for another emotional high. To, you yeah. know. See, and that's the tragedy that we sold on ourselves and we sold to the world, right? Mm -hmm. That we need, it's it, the, the, the whole God thing and the whole self, it's, it's, it's got to be an emotion. It's, mm, if I can't, I've got to feel it. And I've used this analogy, and it's probably very crude and inappropriate, but you can have an emotional moment with Merle Haggard in a cold beer. 
Right. Been there. Right. So, <laughs> Joe's witnessing. Really He's been there. Really? But I'm just saying, it's one of knowing. Right? That's the, it's one of knowing that regardless of those times when we may drag our feet and mumbles, I don't know about this, oh God, life is hard. It's knowing that in that moment, though, that you know I am a child of God. Right? Yes. Because if I got a hold on an emotion, guess what? You're going to end up wherever the wind takes you, right? That's why you have to know that you've accepted Christ and that in that you have the blessings of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. It's not some freak show, if I may. It, it is a reality of who he is in our lives. The Spirit is, it, it doesn't just overpower us. It, it, many believe that the witness of their salvation is all built around being, being in some emotional state. But if I read in teaching that Jesus Christ and his very own examples recorded in history does not show Jesus ever having uncontrolled emotional breakouts, except maybe in the temple that day, right? Yeah. Which I'm still using that as my defense case right now. I don't think it was uncontrolled, though. It, well, that was a, yeah. that's, a, that's a good point. That is probably a, that is a, that is a, that's probably. But in, in, in the analogy I'm trying to use, history, if nothing else, it shows us how to be in prayer. When we look at the examples, right? He was in prayer with his father. He was in alignment with the Holy Spirit. And he was in controlled nature. I still like the part where he nailed down and, and, and rode in the dirt, right? I still think that he was having a Tim moment at that point. So I better, mm, I'm going to have to get my son. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. We don't know what he nailed down. But we know that he showed us time and time again that he was in a controlled person, right? Mm -hmm. And my concern is not a criticism. Don't get me wrong. I'm not criticizing. It's, it's, it's just a concern for those who believe that for every encounter with the Holy Spirit has to be a description of, of Acts 2.2 2, that suddenly a, a rushing wind came in and they were filled, right? You were filled at the time of salvation. Mm -hmm. it, see, it... it it's, it doesn't have to be an overwhelming spiritual encounter. You had that moment. Does it happen? Yes. The Holy Spirit, like Butch said, you can, you can quench it, but you can also loose it, right? Mm -hmm. that, that, see, that almost implies that, it, that, that you lose the relationship. Doesn't it, to some degree? If it's only that when he fills me, you're filled right now. You're filled right now. The question really does come down to how much do we lose him? Huh? That's, that's what we really got, uh, Butch. We're, we're not good at just quenching him. We, we can just flat hold him back. Yeah. We can hide him so well someday some people don't even know where we're from. You know, when you're, you're, I'm just saying. When you're witness to someone, you know, a lot of times, you know, this is the older I get, the shorter my memory gets. You just told this story. We're going to move on. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Anyway, you know, when you're witness to someone, know when the scriptures are coming, it's the Holy Spirit giving them to me. It's mm -hmm. not, it, you know, because the Holy Spirit will lead you to the where you need witness. He will give you what you need to witness this person. And everything that you say will come to that person. That person will understand what you're saying because it's the Spirit working out of you in this person. That's the way the Holy Spirit gives you the remembrance of what God did for you and all you're doing is sharing the blessing that God gives to you to the other person that's lost or the other person that's having a need. You know, when you're dealing with people, you say, well, how in the world? I don't know what to say to that person. When you get there, the Holy Spirit will give you what to say. And, and, what, and in that, what is, the, what is the word that he, what, what, is, what is it that he will give you? It starts with a C. That's a good one. Not quite what I'm looking for. Courage. Thank you. Courage to do what? To get... I, I, I ain't good enough. I'm not good enough. I, I don't, I'm going to stumble through. He told us that in Moses. Moses said, I can't. I, I need it. And he said, I'll give you air. Right? He gives us six. But it's, it's the courage to let him, to let to witness. Mm -hmm. To have the courage, especially in this world today or any world, any time, to stand up and say, hey, do you know Jesus Christ? Just like I was talking to the guy this week. when He, he, he delivers hay all over the place. And like I ask him, have you just taken the time when you get there? Before you leave, just look at the guy and say, here, hey, I need to get my money. And by the way, do you know Jesus Christ? Do you know the love of Christ? Right? It's, it can be unnerving, can it? Huh? To have the courage. But this is when you have to go inside and say, what do I have? I am armed with the Holy Spirit. I'm armed with the knowledge of God. This goes back to last Sunday with the kids with burning them. The sword, right? The belt, the shoes, the sandal, the helmet. All this is real deal stuff if we apply it to our lives and realize who we are. More importantly, realizing who we're not. We're not of this world, right? 
housewives, fathers, mothers, uh, welders, uh, electricians, mechanics, valve salesmen. Yes, that is what we're defined as, as a living, but as everything else, we are a child of God here to witness the responsibility we were given on the day of Pentecost. Amen? Amen. It's just having the courage to step up and say, this is who I am. Well, you're weird. Thank you. We don't have any friends. I know. It's all good. I'm, I'm not getting invited to the party, right? I got it. I got it. I wouldn't come in anyway. <laughs> See, the purpose of the Holy Spirit is to give us direction, encouragement, and enlightenment to understand of the knowledge of God. Therefore, it's a positive redirection, right? It, it's not a baby. As I said this morning, it's not, he's not there to babysit us. If you've accepted Christ, you should know where you are going. He's given us the direction, right? He shouldn't have to keep going, stop that, stop that, stop that, like Jenny does guy all the time. Stay out of the ice cream. Get out of the, the sweet rolls, right? No, it, it, he's not, it, 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 it's, it, it's not, he's not there to incite us some spiritual riding within us either. It, he's there to strengthen us and to guide us. You have nothing else to keep us stable. And this is also what I want to remind you. It's not some invisible hand or not some puppeteer and you're not going like this either. It's a relationship that you have with the indwelling spirit of God. Amen. Right? And, and, that, and we won't get to it tonight, that whole statement that hey, the devil made us do it. No, we'll go down that road some other time, but it's the same way. The, 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 the encouragement of the, of, of the Holy Spirit is to grow us in him. It is to sanctify us. Because the Holy Spirit does not come to us with the intent of condemnation. Now, here we go with that word, that condemnation. Because as we just read, he has given us, he's given to us at the time of what? Salvation. Why would he go back into condemnation? Is there another C word, though, that he does use? Conviction. Correction. Which is? Conviction. Conviction. And we're not going to get to that tonight because I want to save that for another night. But conviction is the word that you're looking for, right? Mm -hmm. Conviction of heart, conviction of direction. And, and back as far as the condemnation part, you see, you have to, I mean, I think of John three seventeen. God did not send his son in the world to condemn the world. If he did not send his son in the world to condemn the world, why would he give us the Holy Spirit to condemn us? <laughs> he wouldn't. He convicts uh -huh. us because he loves us. He convicts us because he's, like I said, he's in that, like I said this morning, he's over there saying, hey, this is where you should be. <coughs> right? And God, God and we, will use the Holy Spirit in circumstances to put you where he wants you. Period. And he's still working on you, I can oh, tell you. There's zero doubt. I need a lot of work. <laughs> Me too. But it's, you know, the most, I was thinking, you know, one of the most encouraging parts of this position here is to watch people come alive in God. And if you haven't, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I, I don't know how to explain it. But the questions change, the comments change, the way they look at their life change, and you can see what I really want to tell them is they're asking questions like, "Well, is this how God intended this?" And it, it's it, it is the question that they're asking is this, you know? And I, I'm not giving you details, but I'm just saying how they ask the question. But it's that they're asking the question related to how God influences their life, and then you know, hey, it's starting to sink in. See, they're starting to see life for what life is, and they're starting to see God for what God is. And that is probably the most rewarding part, or one of the most rewarding parts of this, is to see that transformation start to take place when they finally begin to realize, this is bigger than I am. Right? And that's the beautiful part about it, because again, the Holy Spirit is working with us. He's not there to condemn us. Uh, it, it, Titus uh, chapter 3 but turn to Titus right quick. It's raining. Y'all don't want to rush home anyway. <laughs> they're not a cowboy. They're not football games on either. I can never. I will never find Titus. <sighs> I know. I know where it's supposed to be, but it's not. It's not there in my Bible, Rivers. I didn't get Titus. I got. I got. I got. I, got I didn't get. Y'all get Titus. Titus, uh, chapter three, verse four. Uh, verse four. Titus, chapter three, verse four. I don't even have a chapter three. I got a one and a two. It comes after two. Oh, there it is. It's got my thumb on top of it. <laughs> That's why you got paying me the big bucks right there. See, in verse three it says, "But when the kindness of the Lord of God, our Savior, toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done." Now here's the good part. But according to His mercy, He saved us. Through the washing, uh, that washing, there's that R word, Jenny, washing 
of the regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit, of whom he poured out abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. Isn't that beautiful? The Holy Spirit comes to us with a positive intent of, of directing us to realize what we should be doing, right? He's not carrying a list around. I promise you, going, these things you shouldn't be doing. He's trying to direct us in the right path, in the right. It's not a condemnation, but a conviction. And like I said, we don't have time tonight. I want to, well, I, don't, we could, I want to save that part and talk about conviction. That is why in salvation we are regenerated by the Holy Spirit, and also we are sanctified as well. Real quickly, as we close tonight, look over at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And I really won't find that one. Where's that one at, Rivers? Uh, You're following Deborah around. Uh, <laughs> ah, I found it. I found it. I found it. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. When we get past the part of where the salvation was for the renewal, the regrowth, right? That's what that word means. Regeneration, the renewal. Regrowth, restoration, restoration to what? Now I'm still, I'm still, in, I'm still, in, I'm still over in, in Titus at the moment. I see some words there. Where, I mean, in John, where did he go? I haven't got the Second Thessalonians there. So in the restoration, right? We are restored to who we're supposed to be, which is what? A child of God. And Second Thessalonians two thirteen says, "But we were are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brother and beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through." Sanctification by what? The Spirit. By the Spirit. And then notice right behind that. What's right behind that in your Bible? Through belief in the truth. Just that one little three-letter word. What is it? Belief in the truth. Nope. Back up. Yeah. By the Spirit. Spirit. What's and, right after the Spirit? And. 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 <laughs> okay. That's a very important and. Why? <laughs> by the Spirit and what? Belief. Whose belief? Your belief. Yeah. Romans 10, 8, 9, and 10, right? Mm -hmm. Therefore, if we confess with our mouths and believe that Jesus is raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You see why I said it's a two-part epoxy? Because right there, that and is very, that's why these little bitty words are so critical sometimes to take your time and read because it says the sanctification by the Spirit. Sanctification is making something uh, holy, right? Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? Huh? The, whole, the Holy Spirit is working right now to try to make Chris sanctified that's a full time job that's what I'm saying I have I like no I'm just kidding I'm totally messing with you. we are all in that boat yes, right yes. but there's the beauty of that passage sanctification by the spirit and belief in the truth mm -hmm. therefore in the Holy Spirit and our belief we become what children of God we accept salvation once again one with the other to, to witness our salvation is to witness the indwelling of the Holy Spirit now this is important because it's what this is what this touches this touches the the top exterior of understanding of the Holy Spirit but not that he needs my endorsement I think the words of John go a long way to describe the occupation of the Holy Spirit and I had to I'm gonna pass to press on the occupation meaning his job requirement so real quickly if you would turn in closing tonight to John 16 John 16. I can find John because it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, right? John 16. I'm, I'm that sharp. John 16, and let's close with this verse, and, and, and starting in verse 13. Let me know when you're there. Everybody good? Yep. Okay, John 16, 13. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, and he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I say that he will take of mine and declare it to you. Mm -hmm. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come. Mm -hmm. When has he come? At the moment of salvation. Amen. Mm -hmm. At the moment of salvation. You know, in closing, I was thinking about this. You know, when Jesus died, it was, it was very real. And, and, and if you look at John 16, if you go back and read further, it, it, he's talking to them about going away, about the upcoming crucifixion. And I was thinking about it. It was, a very, it was very real and immediate for his disciples, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it was not a movie. It was real. They, they saw the blood and the abuse. They heard the, 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 whip, the, the, the crack of the whip, the horrid sound of the flesh on the bone being ripped away. They witnessed him struggling to carry the cross up the hill. 
And I think the most agonizing part that I always think about of the cross is when they, when they put somebody on the cross, when they nail them to the cross, and then they put the cross in the hole. That jarring mm. thud of the cross and the weight being put on those points in your body, I don't know if it's through the wrist or through the hands, everybody can argue that later, but I'm just saying when that cross thuds in the ground, that agonizing pain to know you're in that spot, right? Mm -hmm. that, that jarring impact it has, it, it was real to them. And when they rolled the stone across the face of the tomb, I mean, think about it. You, you have a dear friend, many of us have lost loved ones, right? And though we know that many of them are saved and we celebrate their life, that moment when that, when that casket's lowered in the ground or we know that they're fully gone, it's heartbreaking to us, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the way it was for, for the disciples that night, that, 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 that during that time. It, it was very real because they, they, they had become, they, he had become their hope, right? Mm -hmm. He'd become the message. He was something new in a world of darkness, which is what? The same message that he is today, right? right. See, Jesus then is Jesus now, right? And, and, and in that, there was, there was this hope and time in which Christians were being killed, being slaughtered, matter of fact, right? I mean, they were entertainment value. And he was their hope in an extremely dark world. And for all that he taught them suddenly, and for all that he taught them suddenly, there he was hanging on a cross. There he was dead in a tomb. The disciples were filled with sorrow, and that's why the Holy Spirit being given to us is such a massive comfort. Because that's what he told them. If you go back up and read in John 5, look at verse, uh, John 16, verse 5, real quick. I know I told you I was closing, but y'all should know me better by now. I am, I am closing now. This is closing. So as you're reading John, John 16, verse 5, when he told his disciples, but because I have said these things to you, speaking to, up to the upcoming crucifixion, sorrows has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. See, the Holy Spirit is granted to us in salvation to assist us in this life, reminding us of the promise and that the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Just like it said in Deut Deuteronomy 31, we can never be alone if we're Christians because we always have the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm probably getting in trouble with this. As far as I know, you can't lose him either. <laughs> huh? You can't go away from his presence but you can't lose him. See, he's there to direct us and encourage. Therefore, when you witness a child of God growing in the pursuit of truth, and we were talking about this earlier, when you see someone that is really growing in their strength and their truth, growing in their witness, then you can, you can witness right at that moment the indwelling of the Spirit of the Holy Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. And it says, as we've studied tonight, and we do not come to Christ perfectly by no means, but growing and learning how to be Christians, we can be we can be is the evidence of our salvation and the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. If you see someone that is dead in Christ, you have to ask the question, did they ever become alive in him? Amen. <laughs> but when we witness this growth, when we, we, we witness this, then we, we, we see it as, and, and, it's, and, it, and what I'm trying to say, it's that consistent, steady walk in Christ. Not that we fall back or not that we don't fall down, but it's that, it's that steady walk in Christ. That's why it is a walk with him. Not some emotional thing that happens. Not some emotional situation that occurs. And we have those. We have closer moments. But at the bottom line of the fact of it is, do you have a daily walk with him? Does it show? See, he come to inspire us and to comfort us. And therefore, I can leave you with this tonight. And, it, and like I said, this was the, the top level view. And we're going to study some more about the Holy Spirit. But I can leave you with this tonight to let you know the fact that he does not come in condemnation. And he's not there to slap your hand. But he will convict you. And that is a longer story for another night. <laughs> but he will convict you in order to bring you back. Why? Why? Because he wants to punish you? Yeah. No. Because he wants you to be a present. Because he loves you. Just as any good parent would. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you all tonight. We did run over as usual. Okay. So, anyhow. Anything in closing tonight? Any closing comments? Question. Sure. Yes. Uh, uh, was successful. She's in room 142. Be there about three days. Okay. They did do a partial replacement, whatever that means. Uh, so, uh, I'm, I mean, you know, I don't know what a successful operation and everything went well, I guess. So, she's back in her room. And uh, anyway, if you can get by there, I guess it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So, room 142 at Regional. Um, try to get by there and see her. Anything else? Don't forget, this is Valentine's week. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Can I tell you something?
tell you about how the Spirit dealt with me one time? If you like. Well, Kathy and I were getting groceries for the Highway 80 mission. Mm -hmm. Okay, I had all everything figured out. How many hams, how many what I was going to get. I put the hams I was going to get in there, and the Spirit said, put another one in there. Just keep my head, put another one in there. I picked it, put it in just like the sun came out. Amen. <laughs> there you go. Being obedient. Not the only time he's told me to do stuff too. And I learned to obey. <laughs> chasten is the word, I think. Chasten, convict, direct. Amen. Amen. That's what draws you to salvation. It's the Holy Spirit wooing you. That was why I didn't get into the conviction part tonight, because yes, he is in part of he is he is there's some roles that he plays prior to that, right? Well, and you know, you have to wonder how many times do you get that sensation when you're walking through the store that says, I need to ask that person about Jesus, and you resist it. What's or, the tragic, or, most tragic feeling to a Christian? Honestly, to a Christian. Missing an opportunity. Exactly. Yeah, depart me. from me, I never knew you. <laughs> that would be the worst one. But what I was really trying to think of is that when you say that, is not having God working or the Holy Spirit urging you in your life to witness because you've turned him down enough that he says... Right? Huh? You say you lose yourself, but no, I didn't say you lost salvation. But just think about it. If he's encouraging you to do stuff for him, I think the loneliest feeling that you could ever have is to find out that he's no longer encouraging you anymore. Because our only goal would be to what? I need to be used by my father. Huh? I want to be used. I want to be used by my father. I want to be. I don't want. That's what Paul told I don't want to be this. I want to be that. I can't achieve that. I want to start preaching this, so we have to. Anyway. <laughs> so, yes, but I do think that would be the loneliest feeling in the world to know that you you were being. I mean, you know, that he was using you, and then for whatever the reason, you have to start examining your life. Right? It goes back to Second Corinthians thirteen five. Where did you go, Father God? I need to examine this again. What happened? Mm -hmm. Because Satan, and we know this, Satan is coming. I was thinking about Miss Betty. Miss Betty, Satan is never going to leave you alone. Mm -hmm. You know why? I said, Satan's never going to leave you alone. Probably ever. not. Ever, right? <laughs> right. He's never going to leave it. He's not going to leave it. He's not going to leave Miss Peggy alone, right? Right. Why? Because anybody that's going to stand up and testify in him, he wants to take them out. He wants them to be quiet. Mm -hmm. Right? The greatest glorification you can have is to know that you're still being pestered. A lot of people say, oh, it's just overbearing. It is what it is. And if you're going to stand in the battle, you're going to get arrow shot at you. The good news is, guess what? We have a shield of faith. He can influence, <laughs> but he can't make you do anything. That's, right. That's another summary for another day. The devil can't make you do it, folks. Sorry. Anyway, I got a hush. We'll just, you know, be like Peter. What is, what is it? Was it in the, yeah, it was right after the uh, 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 Pentecost that Peter, is it Peter that preached like the whole day? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And they finally time to shut up, and then they killed him. So, anyway. Anything else in closing tonight? Don't forget, this is Valentine's week, so Friday night is our big event night. We've got it covered. We did go back to lasagna because apparently it seemed chicken with...